Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the course, How to Use Zebra HC. This is video 25, and today we're talking about modulation sources. So let's go to a new preset here, and underneath this tune, let's select this none here. And the first one that we're greeted with is going to be mod wheel. So basically, we're using the modulation wheel, and depending on how much depth this is, it'll basically determine how much depth your, your mod wheel is going to have at maximum value. Pretty self-explanatory, but we do need to cover these things. Then we go over to pitch wheel, which is basically using the pitch wheel instead of the modulation wheel to do whatever modulation that you would like. Then we have control A and control B. So these are kind of interesting because these are going to be just different CC values, right? So control A is going to be number two and control B is going to be number 11. So moving on from here, we have gate and gates basically on off, right? So zero or one. So in this case, if we have gate on, let's say we double click it, right? So we're not doing anything. It acts as we normally would expect it to, right? We turn on this gate. And we're kind of almost getting exactly what we would normally get if we just increased our tune, right? Because it's either on or it's off. So kind of think of some interesting possibilities that you could use on a gate. Kind of an interesting modulation source right over there. Next up, we have key follow. So this is best, I think, demonstrated on a filter here. So if we have something like this, we bring our cutoff down a little bit here and select key follow. And if we play notes here, we can see over here that our cutoff is basically staying in one spot. However, if we give it some full modulation amount, when we change our notes, the filter is going to open up as we ascend notes. We can also go the reverse direction, and if we go up notes, the filter is going to close, and we go, we descend notes, and the filter is going to open up a little bit more. Key follow is kind of cool because if you don't always have to use it on cutoff, you can use it on a lot of different things. I personally like using it on vibrato for higher notes, right? So if you have an LFO, right, changing the pitch, you basically put that or use key follow on that. So the higher notes are going to get a little bit faster vibrato or more of a depth than the lower notes. So it kind of gives you a little bit more realistic feel to it. Clicking here and going to key follow, it's basically the same thing, except that this includes the glide to parameter. Velocity, pretty much self-explanatory as well, but basically the harder that you hit your notes or the softer you hit your notes, you're going to have more of a value, right? So this is something kind of cool on a cutoff because the harder you hit notes, maybe you want your cutoff to be a little bit more open so you have more frequency or higher frequency content. So it sounds a little bit more expressive in that sense. Then we have aftertouch, which is kind of also in that expressive kind of way, right? So let's say you have a MIDI keyboard that supports aftertouch and you're playing softly and then you kind of dig into those notes and then it might open up the filter a little bit more. It might give you some more vibrato or something kind of like that. So it kind of makes your patches a little bit more alive, more expressive, makes them sound a little bit more, some soul in there, right? So moving on from here from the aftertouch, this is probably one of my favorite modulation sources, the ARP mod. So. We haven't necessarily gone in depth in the arpeggiator yet, but keep in mind, we go over here to this voice setting, right? And if we go from poly to arpeggiator and go to this arp mod or arp control over here, and just for now, I'm gonna put this octave to zero. And I'm holding now one note and it's basically cycling through this. I'll select eight for now. So we have these little bars here and they might be a little bit hard to see, but we can increase this up here from basically zero to positive 100 or zero to negative 100. Now, the cool part about this here is we have two of these bars, right? And we have ARP mod one and ARP mod two. So the far left bar here is gonna be ARP mod one and this other bar to the right is gonna be ARP mod two. So if you haven't figured it out yet, basically we can use these values to modulate something as the ARP is going. So we're modulating something in sync with our arpeggiator, which is really, really cool. So for example, we have a good amount of modulation here and let's do some values kind of like this, right? Let's kind of do some random modulation stuff here like that, make this one really open. Let's kind of leave this one here and something kind of like this, right? So take a listen. So we have all these different values, right? And this is going to be our main depth here, this, this, uh, this modulation knob. But these little bars are saying how much of that depth are we going to actually apply to the cut of how much are we going to actually modulate and it's really cool because if you have a lot of stuff using this you can almost make your arp really kind of work with other parameters inside the synth that makes some really cool sounding stuff so kind of think of the different possibilities that you can do and you also have a second one here which is also really cool too so you can have different different things modulating depending on the arpeggiator so it's it gets pretty in depth pretty quick but it's a very very cool modulation source there 
So basically the other ones that we have to cover are going to be the M map and then the M mix, which we're going to do in a separate video because those require a little bit more special, a little bit more time to cover those. So that's the end of this video. Hopefully uh, you learned something here. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.